What's up, everybody? It's Pykel with League of Items, and I moved things around a little bit in my room, so that's kind of a new backdrop, but not really. Uh, in this video, we're going to do several things, all related to the LCK. Uh, we're going to take a look at all of the matches for this week. There are 10 matches. We're going to take a look at my tier list, and we're going to explain how I, how I use my tier list to kind of guess what the odds are going to be, um, and then compare like then I do comparative analysis it's not really much of an analysis but you compare the projected line to the actual line to see like where your opinion differs from the market um, we also have a new setup for the screen so I kind of like this a lot better so we'll see how this goes um, in this video today so first things first let's talk about my tier list um, there are ten. T there are ten teams in the LCK. There are a bunch of different teams in a bunch of different tiers. So let's just go through it. In my S tier, I have Gen G and T1. Going into the season, Gen G and T1 were thought to be two of the strongest teams in the league. Um, they were already top three teams. Um, Damwon Kia is the, the third team, but Damwon Kia hasn't been as good this split. And I guess there are questions surrounding their bot lane and their top lane in regards to how they fit with Canyon and Showmaker. Obviously, Canyon and Showmaker are a great combination. Um, maybe the best jungle mid duo in the world. Like, it's debatable for sure. Um, that's really the, the strength of their team, and they're kind of having difficulties bringing everybody onto the same page. Um, I think it's a little overblown for now. So I have them in the A tier, but it's really tough to distinguish between the top three teams, in my opinion. Then next up, we have DRX. DRX is a team that I was high on going into the season um, because I like a lot of the individual players from DRX, especially uh, Piosik and Zika. Um, obviously, Deft is like a, a very famous AD carry, one of the best AD carries of all time, probably, or at least definitely one of the winningest of all time. Um, he just lost 2-0 on his anniversary, so that was kind of annoying. Uh, they'd be, I think, they'd be in third place on their own if they had won that match. Um, they would have been one match ahead of Dom Juan Gaming. Uh, or Dom Juan Kia. Uh, and then in the next tier below that, we have three teams. We have KT Rolster, Kwang Dong Freaks, and Red, uh, Nongshim Red Force. Uh, and, like, within a tier, it's really tough to distinguish between the teams. Um, which will go with... You'll, you'll be able to tell kind of what I'm talking about when we look at the spreadsheet. And then in the D tier, we have Live Sandbox, Fred Brion, and Hama Life. So basically, this serves as the starting point for the tier list, or the tier list serves as a, as a starting point for the projections in the Excel sheet. So in here, there's like a, a tier differential for um, for the teams. So every tier has a numeric value associated with it. The S tier is four, A tier is three, B tier is two, uh, C tier is one, D tier is zero. And then you take those two numbers and I subtract them against one another to come up with this number right here. So this is the, the number of tiers that separate two teams. And then you take that, it does an X lookup, and it looks into this um, small table to see what the projected odds look like. So if a, tier, if a team from the S tier plays against a team from the D tier, we would expect the implied win rate for the favorite to be about 90%. And I, I included rake in certain ones of these and not as much rake in other ones, just to kind of get the numbers to where I wanted them to be. And this isn't meant to be a predictive, um, this isn't meant to be predictive. This is just projecting out a rough estimate so I can kind of get an idea of how far I might be from the market. And a lot of the times it's really close. So we can take a look at some of the matches from this week. So. Um, first up we have KT Rolster against Kwangdong, um, the Kwangdong Freaks, and they are in the same tier, but since 
KT Rolster is listed as the favorite on the sports books. They get a slight edge into this. When you're playing somebody in your tier, it really should be thought of as a 50-50. The fact that KT Rolster is thought of more highly than uh, Kwang Dong Freaks, we shouldn't really change our opinions too much um, between the two teams. So let's take a look at the rosters real quick. So KT against Kwang Dong. So just lane by lane. Keen against Rascal, pretty similar talent-wise. Elim against Cuz, both former T1 junglers, pretty similar. Fate against Arya, pretty similar. Um, I probably prefer Arya slightly. And then we have Teddy and Hoyt versus Aiming and Life. And Teddy and Aiming are both highly thought of AD carries. So you can see that the talent, which is what I base my tier lists off of, is very similar. So it makes sense that they're in the same tier. And it makes sense that this is basically a 50-50 matchup. Um... In this matchup, I think that I, I think that I prefer KT Rolster. They've definitely been a little stronger this season. Let's take a look at the standings. They're both four and six, but let's take a look at their victories and losses. So KT Rolster has the same number of losses, but they've lost two matches against Dom Juan, which is obviously tough. Uh, you expect them to lose that. They have victories over Kwang Dong when they played before. They have a victory over Hama Life, Fred Aprian, but they all they also have the best win out of the two teams, which was against Gen G. That may have been during COVID. Um when Gen G had actually no, I don't think it was during COVID. I think that was early on in the season. Um but you know, that's not really the point of the this exercise. But if I had to pick, I would probably lean towards KT Rolster, which is exactly what the sports book is saying. In the second match, we have T1 against Dom Juan Kia. So this is where you can kind of see a pretty big difference. So this is an eight percentage, uh eight percent differential. The projected line has them about 150, and it has Dom Juan at about 125, so at 60 to 44 percent. Um, but the real the real line is T1 is implied to win. 68% of the time, and Dom Juan Kia is projected to win 38% of the time. So this is a spot where um, long-term talent, I think that you could make the argument that Dom Juan is just as good, maybe even better than T1. Um, it's a tough argument to make, uh, but if you just take, if you just think about the opinions of players that we've had for the past year or so, you could see how it's extremely close, and depending on the role, it can kind of go either way. I think Bertal... Uh, against Zeus. I think Birdall is probably the more highly thought of um, top laner for future prospects because they also have a higher carry upside than Zeus does. Not to say that Zeus cannot carry a game, but he is less likely to carry a game. He's also less likely to throw away a game, but that's fine. Uh, in the jungle, Canyon and Owner. I think most people would still say Canyon is the better player long term. Owner has been probably playing better this split relative to expectations. Faker against Showmaker. Showmaker is the better player at this point in their careers. And then Gumiusi and Keria against... Um, drawing a blank. Oh, Diokdom and... Diokdom and Kellen. Um, I think you you definitely have to prefer T1 in that situation. I, going into the season, I did like the change from Ghost to Diokdom, but... You're going from a utility AD carry to Diokdom, who is more likely to play hard carry champions and deserves more attention and resources. So uh, Dom Juan is kind of figuring out that as they go along throughout the season. So I think personally, I'll probably be on the Dom Juan side of this matchup. You're not getting a ton of value on this line, but plus 160 for a team of Dom Juan's caliber, I think you kind of have to go after that. Then the next match, we have DRX against uh, Fred Brion. So the projected line was minus 230. The actual line is minus 238. Uh, and then Frederick Brion is 200 to 179. So it's about the same. They're, that's a, that's just why I have it's the numbers set up the way that they are. Uh, so we can move on from that. I obviously prefer DRX. I like DRX a lot. Um, I'm not going to bet on that line because there's no projected value there. But, you know, that's the side that I would pick. Uh, la, la, la. Sandbox. Minus 115 to minus 128. So again, there's no value there to bet on. Um, I do slightly prefer Live Sandbox or Live Sandbox, however you want to say it. Although they are the team that uh, employed Yamato Cannon. So that's definitely a demerit in my book. Uh, Gen G against Nongshim. We have minus 400 
Um, I don't think that Nongshim, going into this season, I kind of liked Nongshim. I do like the talent on their roster, but they haven't looked very good. They've had a lot of COVID problems over the past couple of weeks, which also decreases the amount that people people trust them. I think that's definitely a spot where if your book is offering a line early on, you might want to bet them plus one and a half maps because they could definitely take a map off of Gen G. Uh, then we have Damwon against Kwangdong. Um, so this one, this one's a little bit... It's relatively accurate. It's just when you get into the two hundreds, like the amount, the amount of dollars, like this is representative for dollar figures, um, or is directly related to dollar figures. The implied win rate. It takes more money to move the implied win rate because uh, this is about right. So yeah, two hundred and two twenty five. So that's two percentage points. That five percentage points. Um, so again, not a lot of value there. I don't want to pick teams against Don Juan Kia. They're, Don Juan Kia is probably undervalued right now. Um, like I could easily see Don Juan being an S an tier team. Um, and then this line would be closer to the minus 400. Um, KT Rolster against Fred Brion. Again, we have a team in KT Rolster that's probably underperforming. Fred Brion is a team that I don't really have a good feel for. Uh, in general, a lot of their players just, they're not very impressive on their own. They have had some good matches overall, so I feel like I'm always potentially off with Fred Brion, but I do prefer the KT side. I would expect the KT side to win. Um, maybe if you believe in Fred Brion, you can definitely justify the plus one and a half maps. I'm not sure how much you can do outside of that. Then the next match, we have T1 against Homolife. I'm definitely on the T1 side there. Uh, projected at minus 900, the actual is minus 909, and that's because the sports book is saying that T1 will beat Homolife in a best of three 90% of the time. That's pretty insane. Well, not insane as it's wrong, but insane that it's just such a huge number, um, and it's going to be very tough for people to convince themselves to bet on Homolife. The next match we have Genji against DRX, um, and this is this is about where you would expect the lines to come in. I almost want to bet DRX outright because when when you're when you're kind of creating tier lists, creating expectations for these teams, you want to kind of think about the upside of these different teams. I think that DRX has the upside of being closer to the top three, not a top three team, but very close to a top three team. And if that was the case, we'd really be looking at a one. Uh, a like a one to two tier difference. This is at a two tier difference. So you'd really want it to be closer to one, one or one and a half. One, one. Yeah, you really want it closer to one. I would want it about probably in between these two spots. Uh, and then the last match of the week is Nongshim against uh, li li Live Sandbox, Live Sandbox. The projected line based on where I have the tiers is minus 150. The actual line is minus 323. And this is a spot where the sports book is basically saying, we know there's a lot of uncertainty around Nongshim's roster because of uh, COVID, but we expect them at full strength to be much better than Sandbox. So this is where my opinion of Nongshim's long-term talent compared to uh, Sandbox is more in line with the market than I would want it to be because Nongshim hasn't been performing very well throughout this year, so that scares people off of the minus 323. I think it'd be pretty difficult to um, to bet that number because you're, you're effectively betting $323 that Nongshim wins and you get back 100 bucks. That doesn't sound like fun to me. Um, so going back to the... Uh, the tier list and the playoff picture. In the LCK, six teams qualify for playoffs and two teams go to the semifinal. So it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a double gauntlet, I guess, is what it's considered. So we think at this point we think that Gen G and T1 will most likely be the two the top two teams. Um they have a, a slight advantage, and they should be able to hold on to that because the only games that you really expect there to be 
um, like a question mark for Genji would be against Dom Juan and T1, but you expect them to win the rest of their matches. For T1, maybe they drop a match to DRX, Genji, Dom Juan, um, or they just lay a stinker, which T1 does every once in a while. Um, but for the most part, those are going to be the two teams at the top. Then for the rest of it, according to my power rankings, I would say Dom Juan, DRX uh, should definitely both make it. And then it comes down to two out of the three teams from here. So KT Roaster, Kwang, Nong Freaks, and Nongshim. I would ex- I would expect two of those teams to kind of sneak in. I'd be surprised if Sandbox, Reddit, Brion, or Humble Life made it into the playoffs. Um, but that's why they play the games. So basically, that's what I have for you today in this video. I'm going to make a similar video for the LEC and the LCS as well as the LPL. The LPL is a lot more difficult because there are 17 teams, so I'll probably do LCK, LEC, LCS before I undertake the LPL. Um, But there will probably be a follow-up video to this in a little while talking about the rest of the matches. When there's like two to three matches left, I'll probably do the rest of the matches for the LCK and kind of talk through it and what the expectation should be going into playoffs. Um, I hope you liked the new kind of layout of things. I like the the scene that looks like this a lot better, uh, just like a bigger camera next to the screen. Um, it helps with visibility of the stuff that I, I show. Um, but that's basically it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.